Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and this is our multi-tester take on how the Nike Invincible 3 compares to the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25. So here's a quick rundown of the key differences between the Nike Invincible 3 and the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25. We'll start with price with the Invincible 3 coming in at £170 or $180. And the Nimbus 25 priced at £175 or $160. So some differences in pricing across the US and the UK. Weight wise, a UK size 8 Nimbus 25 dropped on the scales at 290 grams and the Invincible 3 at 286 grams, putting them quite close in weight terms. Otherwise, both offer knit style uppers with Nike using a newer, more supportive version of its fly knit. There's also a more padded tongue on the Invincible 3 compared to the thinner, stretchier one used on the Nimbus 25, with similar laces and levels of padding at the heel used on both shoes. Nike shoe has a 9mm drop compared to the 10mm one on the Nimbus 25, with Nike using its Zoom X midsole foam to deliver a plush, bouncy and protective ride. ASICS uses its FF Blast Echo Foam to give it a more cushion ride than previous Nimbus shoes. Other things worth mentioning is that Nike uses a heel clip to offer additional support, while ASICS uses its pure gel technology at the rear of the shoe to help absorb impact and deliver smoother transitions. At the outsole, ASICS uses an AHA rubber one, while Nike uses waffle style design, which covers more of the outsole with both aiming to offer good grip on roads, and pavement in wet and dry conditions. So both of these shoes fit me very well, true to size. Uh, I have no concerns really with the fit on either, although I would say with the Nike either, the heel can be a little bit loose. For some people, I, it didn't give me the perfect lockdown, but I didn't have any problems of rubbing or anything like that myself. So yeah, I was fine, true to size in both shoes. Fit for me in both of these shoes is true to size. I wouldn't size up or size down in them. The uh, Invincible is a little bit of a narrow shoe, and some people have mentioned that they've got issues with the heel clip. I didn't have any issues with it at all. I've been fine with it on my runs. The Gel Nimbus 25, Completely fine, stick true to size. So fit for me, I would absolutely go true to size in both of these shoes. I think they tick all those important boxes in terms of that fit, in terms of something that's designed for kind of long, easy recovery runs. Good space up front in the toes. Um, I think the midfoot, I think you get a nicer kind of more closed in kind of feel on the Nike shoe, whereas I think it's a little bit more accommodating and spacious on the Gel Nimbus 25. And then you get similar levels of padding, particularly inside of the heels in both of these shoes. So you've got that kind of level of comfort there as well. You're getting maybe a kind of nicer, more padded tongue on the Nike shoe um, in general. But yeah, I would go true to size in both these shoes. No real issues from a fit point of view. I think very, very good in terms of being good kind of max cushion shoes built for long, easy runs. Um, I find that Nike come up big. So they, these are both a UK five. I'm a UK five in pretty much every running shoe except New Balance because they come up really small. And you can see that the the Invincible is bigger. This is a UK five, but Nike make a UK five an EU 38.5, whereas ASICS make a five and most shoe brands make a five a 38. So I would say if you're used to running a Nike and you're thinking of buying the Nimbus, have a try on of half a size bigger. I didn't need to go up half a size, I had enough room, but it definitely is a tighter fit than the Nike. I've got more room in the toe box in this shoe, um, but both fit well. A quick word on fit. I ran in a UK eight and a half in both the shoes, the uh, Invincible 3 and the Gel Nimbus 25. I felt like the fit was far more compact, hugging, snug, and overall kind of comfortable in the Nimbus 25 than I did in the Invincible 3. I just felt like there was a bit of bagginess, there's a bit of looseness. There's definitely a bit more space in the toe box, probably a bit more space across the midfoot as well, but I did find the uh, the Invincible 3 harder to get a lockdown fit. There was a lot more kind of sliding. Even in my size, UK and a half, I, it, it felt like a big shoe. I wouldn't go half a size down, but overall, they just felt a little bit slappy and a bit kind of sloppy in terms of the fit, particularly into the sort of, um, into the toe box, into the kind of forefoot area. I think you've got to go true to size in these shoes, but I just think you're going to get a bit more of a dialed in, snug, comfortable, yeah, just a better fit in the ASICs.
So we've got a couple of big max cushioned cruisers here in the Nimbus and the Invincible and both pretty fun to run in at times like I do like them both uh, on certain occasions but at the same time sometimes they can both be a little bit much which is what you might expect from a match cushion shoe. Uh, the gel Nimbus 25 is obviously a big departure from the previous version of the shoe but it has really delivered on what ASICS was setting out to do which is to create a really fun comfortable max cushion shoe. It's quite soft but it's not overly soft. It's got a reasonably smooth ride. The foam's not really bouncy but it does give you a little bit back it's got a really well balanced ride i think for a max cushion shoe it's comfortable really enjoyed cruising long runs in this on very tired legs it felt like it was protecting me whilst out not being too big and chunky you know it is too big and chunky if you then want to try and up the pace but that's more or less what you expect for a max cushion shoe like this it's best just for easier long runs and it does a really good job of those um i think it breaks in a little bit after the first only like 10 15k the rider i think smoothed out and felt a bit more enjoyable for me but overall yeah, I was really impressed with the Nimbus 25. Aside from the high price tag, I don't think there's anything really wrong with it as a max cushion shoe. I think it does a really good job. Vincible, I think, is going to be a bit more of a Marmite shoe for people. It's got that big, soft stack of foam uh, we all know about, um, but that creates a very fun ride at times. Like That amount of Zoom X foam creates a ride that no other brand really matches because it's so bouncy, it's really fun, it's squishy, it's quite lively at times. It's probably a tad more energetic than their gel Nimbus 25 if you're going to try and run fast stuff. But the trade-off there is you get a much wobblier shoe, and a shoe I think is less good for or supporting the body and protecting your legs on those long easy runs when you are on tired legs. Nike's tried to make the third version of the Invincible a bit more stable but I didn't find that stable. I've been nursing a little niggle and I have found that I struggle to use this shoe a lot for anything for any runs that are too long just because I did feel it was a bit wobbly and just aggravating little niggles rather than really protecting the body whereas something like the Nimbus I think is much more protective and stable and helpful when you are looking after those tired legs. At the same time when you're feeling a bit fresher you've got your niggle free and you're heading out for easy runs the Invincible 3 is incredible fun to run in like it's really bouncy it's got the most enjoyable ride you'll find in the Max Cushion shoe it's just that trade-off of uh, stability that is still the case with the third version even with the slightly more stable design. So yeah while I do love the Invincible at times there are other times you know, I don't like it so much and I probably wouldn't use it very much, whereas the Nimbus sits in between that, in that I'd be very happy to use this all the time, uh, even if I maybe on its best day, the Invincible, I think, delivers a more enjoyable ride. I was impressed with both of them. I've always loved this shoe. I love the Zoom X foam. It is so soft, so bouncy. It's a foam that's used in the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly, but it's not designed to propel you forwards here. It's designed to really cushion your stride and make it bouncy and make it take some of the work out of an easy run. I've always loved that. The Invincible line has always been my favorite kind of max cushion shoe and it's still there in this shoe. It's more strategically placed where they've put the Zoom X foam. You've not got that same kind of rubber ring that we've seen in previous versions of this shoe. It's not a bad thing. It's still got that kind of sink in plushness. And I would say the same about the Nimbus 25. It's got, it's it, it's slightly, ever so slightly firmer. We're not as soft if you kind of squeeze both shoes. This one shocked me when I got it out of the box. It was really soft. It was really plush, um, but it's not, it's not as not, it's definitely not as soft, but it is comfortable. It is bouncy. You do get that kind of comfortable, ev you know, stride when you're running in this shoe. I would say though, this shoe is definitely best suited for easy runs, long runs. When you try and do faster stuff in this shoe, it doesn't really give you that. It is a kind of, it is like a soft shoe when you're trying to run fast in it. It feels a bit too kind of cushioned. You get a bit more versatility, I think, with the Zoom X foam. I've definitely done tempo sessions in this. And you know, while it wouldn't be the shoe I reach for for a tempo session, it can handle it because it is that responsive Zoom X foam. But I would argue it's a little bit more versatile and it can be a little bit snappier. Um, whereas this is definitely an easy running shoe. So I'll start with the Gel Nimbus 25. And say so I actually think this is a pretty good shoe. I think it's an improvement on the previous versions. It's a, almost a completely different shoe. Um, and as you can see there, it's pretty max cushioned. There's a lot of cushioning in it. What I would say about it is that even though it's very much cushioned, it's not the softest shoe in the world. It's still a fairly well-balanced midsole foam. Um, and it does mean that it's relatively responsive when you're running in it. It's not a soft uh, midsole foam that means that you're sinking into it all the time. And I think you can. it's a good daily trainer uh, that skews towards cushioning. I've, I've, been, I've been enjoying running in this, um, and I think it's a very nice, enjoyable shoe to run in. But what I would say is that 
there's a lot of other cushion shoes out there and there's i don't think there's anything that massively stands out about the uh, a6 gel nimbus 25 over a lot of other cushion shoes out there i think it's fine um i know a6 have called it or have suggested it's the most comfortable shoe in the world i don't think that's the case it's comfortable but i don't i don't feel like it's more comfortable than many of the other shoes that i wear i think it's fine the upper's nice and plush uh not massively so it's not, not when you compare it to a lot of the shoes out there the midsole is fine that's that's what i would say about the a6 gel nimbus 25 it's a it's a very solid good comfortable cushion shoe that veers towards that max cushioning side of things good for easy day runs long runs that sort of thing but you can't really go much faster in this it's not the most versatile shoe in the world now the nike invincible 3 is a really interesting update because invincible 1 and 2 pretty much famous for being really soft and bouncy that zoom x foam in those two shoes is really noticeable and if you're the sort of runner that really likes cushioning and like jane uh you you love those shoes. They're, they're, they're sort of like the furthest end of the spectrum for soft shoes that you can get. Now the Nike Invisible 3 made, has made quite a few updates um, that make it a different style of shoe. So if you're used to running in the Nike Invincible 1 or 2 and you really like that soft, squishy, bouncy energy return feel that you get from them, you don't really get it in this. It's not, it, it's, the, the changes that have been made to this make the shoe a bit more stable, which is good if you thought those shoes were a bit too unstable it might be a nice option and I would say that's probably the main option that you might get this um, but it has made the feel of the shoe a bit duller for me by making it more stable it loses some of that magic that you got from the Nike Invincible 1 and 2 and it makes it more of a standard cushion shoe basically and there's lots of other shoes out there that feel to me very similar to this I don't feel like there's anything really um, excelling when I run in this it definitely doesn't feel as soft as it previously did and that's sort of why I wore the Nike Invincible 1 and 2 because I really like that softness um, and I wouldn't use it for all my runs but for runs where I just wanted to go out and have a really comfortable bouncy um, enjoyable easy run or recovery run it was actually great for those it's really enjoyable shoes to run in this shoe I've just not really found that it really excels in any run it just I've got cushion shoes that maybe aren't as soft as this but they're almost there and i enjoy running them more she's like the new balance more v4 which i think is uh, very similar to this now um but i just enjoy that shoe more it's just got a nicer turnover a uh, bit more of a rocker a bit of a rocker um and yeah it's just a more enjoyable shoe to to run in for me um especially because it's a lot cheaper than the shoe so if i'd have compared the invincible 2 with the gel numbers 25 i would have said that gel number 25 is a more general cushion max cushion shoe which is nice balanced midsole foam but doesn't really excel in softness or doesn't really feel too firm it's just a sort of nicely balanced solid general training uh, cushion shoe now comparing it to the invincible three is different because i think they're actually very similar these two shoes now they're both shoes that really are just there for general cushion running they don't really excel in any area they're not both massively soft or hard but the thing about the invincible three is it just feels like it it's just a little bit more cumbersome than the Invincible 2. Um, and I'd probably go as far as to say that I prefer running in the gel numbers 25 than the uh, Invincible 3 now because it's just, there's not a lot, I'm not getting a lot from this shoe um, and you don't really get the benefits from the Zoom X either. So into that run test and I would say these shoes have landed at a very good time for me where I'm recovering from an injury. I can only really run slow and easy at the moment anyway and these have been the ideal shoes to kind of do that in. Now there are definitely some differences in terms of how these shoes feel. I do think they're very good shoes but I do think there's some clear differences that kind of distinguish or will distinguish between what it feels to run in these shoes. The first thing I'd say are the uppers. I think for me on the Gel Nibus 25 the upper is built for comfort it's built to hug and feel snug around your foot and that's definitely what you get here whether it's from the kind of um up front and the toes here i think particularly at the heel as well i did get a little bit of irritation on some of my runs at the heel from that padding uh, but ultimately it's been generally very solid and if you're looking for comfort from the upper and that fit that's what you're getting here on the Nike Invincible 3, I think it would be a similar story. I think it feels like a more supportive upper. I would say it's probably a more breathable um, upper compared to the Gel Nimbus 25 as well. And I think you're getting something pretty similar in terms of the lockdown that you're getting. I think. Then you kind of work into the kind of midsoles. And those midsoles really do change or alter the way that these shoes feel to run in. I would say with the Zoom X uh, midsole, 
It's definitely more lively than it is on the gel number 25. I definitely think it makes it a more versatile shoe than the gel number 25 as well. I think the gel number 25, you're getting a nice plush midsole here as well. But I think the ride is a little bit flatter for me. I think it's, you know, it's soft, it's smooth, it's consistent, you know, and if that's something you want from a ride, then that's what you get here. But if you want something that feels a little bit more lively, gets you kind of through those transitions a little bit more nice, uh, then, um, I would say the Invincible 3 does that in a better fashion. It's definitely a more, I think they're both very stable shoes. I think they, they offer that stability or that support in very different ways. Um, from an outsole point of view, I think, you know, durability wise and grip wise, I think you're probably gonna experience something pretty similar in terms of what you're gonna get from these shoes. I think maybe you're gonna get a little bit more life out of the Invincible 3's outsole. I think you've got a little bit more coverage as you can see anyway, a little bit less um, that kind of exposed foam in the, sh in the shoe as well. But gripping wise, it's been absolutely fine. If you're sticking to roads, if you kind of want to wander off on lighter trails, you're probably going to have something better suited here from the Nike Invincible 3. Also, I think with the Gel Numbers 25, definitely it's something you want to stick to roads on. But from a grip point of view, they've been absolutely fine. So yeah, for me, I think these do feel like very different shoes to run in, in the same types of runs. I think they're designed for the same types of runs, but I think you can have the scope to run a little bit quicker in the Invincible 3, just because I think the, the makeup of the shoe in terms of the design, the midsole foam, um, the ride that you're getting just feels a little bit more energetic than it does when you're kind of picking things up. Uh, but ultimately the weights are kind of similar in terms of kind of blocking off, really doing kind of quicker speed style stuff, but these are not what these shoes are really designed for. So yeah. For me, I think those are the key things that really stand out or stood out for me in my run testing time with the Nimbus 25 and the Invincible 3. So for my run test, I've probably not done as many miles in these two shoes as some of the other run testers, but what I have done is take these out for a side-by-side -side mile where I wear one shoe on each foot just to see how they compare mid-run and uh, here's what I found for that. So I've just done my usual one and a half mile test. I have got the Invincible 3 on my right foot. I have got the Nimbus 25 on my left foot. And just to see how they compare, and they're actually very, very different shoes. The uh, the Nimbus, it's almost like that kind of, that midsole and that gel covers the entire base of your foot. You're always landing on almost like this big kind of squishy, but also just, I think it just returns at the right amount of time. This kind of midsole that just gives just enough back at the right amount of time. By contrast, I think the Invincible 3, they're a wider shoe. They've got this massive great hulking kind of platform, midfoot hexagonal thing when you look down. But actually underfoot, there's a bit less of that kind of, that platform. You sink a little bit deeper into them. I found them really slippy in the heel. I find them, they're a bit more roomy in the toe box, but there's a bit more slide. There's a little bit less hold. I think the Jill Nimbus hug the foot more nicely. If you like a kind of upper that wraps the foot a little bit more, you're gonna get that more, I think, in the Nimbus. Overall, I think the Nimbus have a much better platform to run off. I much prefer it. I'm also feeling with the, um, Invincible 3, there's a weird kind of rolling of my heel. So it's almost like a, a back and out or inwards sort of to the, yeah, to the medial side. It sort of rolls inwards and almost a little bit back. It's almost like there's a bit missing on the heel. It's not really a nice sensation. I'm not a massive fan of that. And you've got a more kind of consistent platform with the Nimbus 25. I feel like the Nimbus 25 feel more nimble on the foot. They feel a bit lighter, a bit more agile. They're a bit more punchy. There's a bit more spring. And overall, I just like the transition of those a little bit more. They're a little bit more snappy. They roll through a bit better. I feel like there's a little bit too much shoe with the um, Invincible 3 by comparison. They're just a little bit harder to get off the ground. And that platform just doesn't have the, the spring. I don't think it's as good a base. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's my one mile comparison. And so in the miles that I have done in these two shoes, I think the difference for me sort of comes down to the fact that I find the Invincible 3 a bit of an awkward run. I find it quite bulky. I find it quite kind of, the width in it is sort of a little bit odd. It's probably the widest shoe I think I've ever run in. I'd love, I'm gonna measure some of the other ones and check that out, but it just feels huge sort of in the, in the mid foot here. It's sort of looking down, there's this big kind of wide platform. Overall, I just didn't find, I felt like a clunky, slightly uncomfortable, you know, just not a natural run for me. It's not my kind of style of shoe. I much prefer something that is a little bit lighter and a bit more agile. When it comes to the Asics John Nimbus 25, that's where, you know, this is still a big hulking great shoe, but it just feels a little bit slimmer. It just feels a little bit more compact on the foot by comparison. Actually, I think you also get better comfort, you know, super comfort kind of padding from the heel. Overall, I much prefer the kind of wrap and feel of the shoe on the foot more kind of disappearing feel, which is something I go for. I really like the fact that the platform of the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 is sort of like consistent throughout. You kind of get this really nice kind of 
bed that, that sits under the whole foot in a kind of almost like a consistent way. Whereas I don't find you get that with the um, with the Invincible 3. I find there's like, almost like a difference between the heel and the forefoot in that shoe. Yeah, so I think there are some big differences in the way these two shoes ride. So two Max Cushion shoes here that approach their brief in a slightly different way. I think the Nimbus is the more balanced shoe. It's a shoe I'd recommend to people more just because I think it will suit people a lot better. Like there's nothing really displeasing about the ride aside from the fact it's a slightly hefty shoe that isn't that versatile which again i think is what you'd expect looking at it when it comes to easy and long runs it delivers a smooth comfortable ride and just really protects the body well it's pretty stable for such a high stack of foam while still being soft enough underfoot that you feel like you are getting that max cushion experience invincible like i said is a bit more love it or hate it a bit more marmite it's really bouncy really fun at times but at the same time still a bit wobbly still not a shoe that uh, i think everyone will enjoy using because of that and also not perhaps not quite as good at the job of protecting your legs during high mileage weeks or long runs that kind of thing because it is that bit wobblier and therefore doesn't provide the support sometimes that you want and you do get from the gel nimbus 25. i'd also say when using these shoes on anything other than flat roads uh, the nimbus has the edge because it is that bit firmer and more stable underfoot so invincible is not a great shoe for just weaving through a slightly uneven trail as part of a longer road run just because again it is that little bit wobblier so yeah all in all i think they're good shoes i think the invincible has the most fun ride for a max cushion shoe but only on certain occasions whereas the gel nimbus 25 is a much more usable shoe generally all the time and probably fulfills what you want from a max cushion shoe a little bit better by being that bit more supportive and secure on uh, longer and easy runs on tired legs both really expensive that's the other thing here um, i think with the invincible you can certainly look at getting a deal on the older shoe because i think that's a slightly better shoe the invincible 2 the gel nimbus 24 is a very different shoe to the gel nimbus 25 so this is the one to get from that line if you're after a max cushion shoe hopefully those prices will start to come down quite quickly because they are getting pretty crazy for these max cushion shoes but overall i'd say the gel nimbus 25 is the shoe i'd pick out of these two it's you know, not quite as fun as the invincible at times but it is a much more reliable shoe and a more balanced shoe that does its job better in how i'd use it for long and easy runs on my best day i love the invincible for easy runs but like during testing of the shoe i haven't been able to use it as much as i like just because i have found it a bit wobbly when i needed a bit more support so it's always gonna be a bit of a downside with this midsole addict i mean I am, bi I am biased because I love, I really, really do love this shoe. There's not an awful amount of price difference in it. And I think if I was, if I was choosing between the two, I'd lean towards the Nike. I think the Invincible 3 is bouncier, which makes it, it's, it's more exciting to run in. I think on days when I don't want to go for a run and we've all had those days, I reach for this shoe because it's fun to run in. It's bouncy, it's exciting. And this shoe, is fun to run in but it for me it doesn't have that same excitement it doesn't have that same versatility it's a comfortable plush there's no reason why you can run a marathon in it but i think if you're going on a tempo session and you're going to do easy miles and you're going to try and speed up you're going to want this shoe on your foot so it, they're both great running shoes they're both fun running shoes to run in and, and they're both super plush and super comfortable um for me this one's slightly more exciting, but I was really surprised and I really did love this shoe. So both great picks for a kind of max cushioned, easy, soft, comfortable run. So my verdict between these two shoes is it's a very difficult one to compare between two. They're about the same price, they're designed for the same thing. And to be honest, I would struggle to choose between these two um, just based on, on how they deliver. I think I'd actually go for the Gel Nimbus 25 over the Nike Invisible 3, just because I feel like the Gel Nimbus 25 is a bit more of a balanced shoe. It's probably a bit more versatile when it comes to running a bit faster. Not massively fast, you're not going to be doing speed sessions in this year or anything, but it just feels a little bit more like it veers towards the daily trainer side of things as opposed to the max cushion side of things. Um, and other than that, it's just a solid, enjoyable, um, cushioned, trainer really there's not really anything standing out for me on this definitely not the most comfortable shoe i've ever tried um but nike invincible 3 i think the changes that have been made in this version have just made it just a little bit duller it's feels a little bit heftier a little bit heavier um and i i just don't really see the value of it now it's become more stable because if you love the nike invincible 1 and 2 you loved it because it was bouncy and energetic and just felt really enjoyable on your legs when you're running in it now it does all those things still but just not to the same extent so it's a little bit of an underwhelming shoe um, and i because of that i don't think it excels in any area and the only the area that it excelled in before was softness and it, it doesn't have that anymore so i would go for the gel nibus 25 out of these two
So on to my verdict then, and I think this is an easy one for me. I much preferred running it in the Gel Nimbus 25, much preferred the overall kind of platform that you're running on. I got kind of a lot more kind of spring and pop from the Gel Nimbus, a lot more protection. I just found it was a more consistent feel underfoot. I could clip along in it much better. I think the comfort is better. And I also think the overall kind of comfort and the feel and the hold on the foot is much better than the Invincible 3. I just found the Invincible 3 to be a bit clunky, a bit cumbersome, it's a bit too wide for my liking. There's just a bit too much going on. It just didn't feel natural. And I think if you're looking for a kind of really max cushion shoe that feels a bit more natural, the Nimbus 25 is gonna be it. If you really like having that big wide kind of mid to four foot kind of base, then perhaps the Invincible 3 is gonna be for you. But for me, it's the Nimbus 25 is the winner. So my vote on the Nike Invincibles 3 and the Atlas Gel Nimbus 25, which one would stick in my rotation? Now, what I would say is I think loads of people are going to love the, the uh, Invincible 3, mainly because I think the ride, I think, is more exciting, though it's definitely more muted from the um, previous Invincibles. Um, I think it's more versatile shoe than the Gel Nimbus 25 as well. I'd have no kind of qualms running a little bit quicker in this shoe. Whereas I think with the Gel Nimbus 25, I don't think it really has the capacity to, to do that ultimately. But if you are looking for a shoe that prioritizes comfort, that does offer kind of a relatively smooth, kind of consistent ride, the kind of ride that you'd want to run or have when you're running a little bit longer, and you definitely get it in this shoe. It is a, it's got a really comfortable upper on it as well. And I think outside wise, maybe you're getting a little bit more out of the Invincible 3 in terms of grip and in terms of that durability. But the one that would stick in my um, kind of rotation for those kind of easy recovery kind of slow runs, it would probably just be the Gel Nimbus 25. Now, while I do think that this is a more versatile shoe and the ride feels a little bit more lively, I want a shoe that you know prioritizes comfort you know i don't have any issues in terms of that comfort whether it's that midsole whether it's that upper and i've had less issues with the gel nimbus 25 and while i don't think the, the ride is as nice on the gel nimbus 25 i think the things that i want from a recovery shoe and those kind of going long and slow i would just be grabbing the gel nimbus 25 it just edges it for me because of that comfort and the, i've had less issues in this shoe compared to the invincible 3 but i think a lot of people are going to love the invincible 3 not necessarily people who probably love the invincible 1 and 2 but i think if you're looking for something that is a little bit more versatile in terms of a kind of an easy long run shoe then i think that's what you're going to get from this shoe and the prices are about the same you're probably getting a little bit less uh you're paying a little bit less on the gel nimbus 25 so they kind of sit at the same price you know, I would, yeah, as I said, I would go for the Gel Nimbus 25 personally, uh, but I think these are both standout max cushion shoes for those similar types of runs. I think the comfort level just works a little bit better for me, and I would take that over the kind of more lively rides or, you know, energetic ride that you get on the Invincible 3. Okay, so there you have it. That is our take on the Nike Invincible 3 versus the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. Now, if you've got any questions about these shoes or this video or any of the testing that we've done, let us know in the comments. If there are any other comparison videos that you want to see with this shoe as well, let us know about those as well. Um, a little thanks to Sports Shoes for providing the samples that myself, um, Tom, and Jane have used. So that's Nike Invincible 3. Um, as always, like and subscribe. Hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos. And yeah. We'll see you for the next run test video.